a goal. Who got the assist? Who got the assist? Hello, everyone. So we're back a day early, although I'm sure you're OK with that. I uh, just got some work commitments over the next couple of weeks, which means a pair of Sunday pods is loading. And we rejoin you as we head into, in, into the International Snooze Fest. Probably, I think it's for the last time this season, isn't it? For one of our more zoomed out pods after a rather, shall we say, colourful weekend in FPL. And look, off the back of that, we're declaring this a free hit free zone. If you've listened to us for a while, you obviously know how we've approached this week just gone. Um, but we also know a lot of you won't, won't want to think about it just for a little bit. So instead, we're going to part the topic and back to that strategizing and everything looking forward next week. And instead this week, as I've mentioned, take a step back and we invite you to enjoy to join us and hopefully enjoy doing that, having a chilled sort of uh, evening well we're recording in the evening um but a, a chilled sort of little while with us uh, while you do it and i'm tom and i'll be enjoying my beers I'm joined by sam as always you're right mate yeah very well thank you had a nice relaxing weekend enjoyed what little football there was and obviously the fa cup was blockbuster entertainment as it always is so Ooh, yeah, yeah yeah not a bad not a bad weekend all, all said so uh Enough about the FA Cup, though. We'll kind of go into the permutations next week, I think, more so, but maybe dust dust a little sprinkling in of it, of it this week, if possible. In the meantime, though, we are Who Got the Assist. On today's pod, as Tom alluded to, strategy chat, scores on the doors, bold claims, and the game week preview will all be parked. We'll return to that next week. There's only one item on the agenda, and that is having a look back over the last 30 weeks. The underlying data per team, their key men, and that should help us inform our decision as we move into the business end of the season high time we did this i think the last time we did this was around the festive madness so we've got the data updated uh thanks to tom not me um i just sit here and twiddle my thumbs whilst he does that and we're going out um on the open road to give a rundown of the premier league thus far we'll focus on the fpl relevant teams mainly due to time otherwise we'll be here literally all night and as much as we'd love to it is a sunday so we both have work tomorrow um we'll pepper in some consideration like i mentioned for the fa cup results but all of that much more next week due to the amount of time it's going to take for us to really bring that all into focus and figure out exactly what that means for fpl um in the meantime it is sunday the tw- uh, the 16th of march 17th of march even um blank game week 29 has ended with almost everyone breathing a massive sigh of relief that it is all over in the meantime though shall we have a look at those data points tom yeah let's do it so as is our new tradition during international breaks um, the next couple of pods are going to be a pair so one zoomed out like this week and one zoomed in which will be next week and that will cover as i mentioned all the strategizing and everything like that this week it's a bit of looking through the teams in terms of the underlying data what our, observa- what our observations are of each team uh, team by team as far as we possibly can the key men and then uh, next week as i've kind of said we're looking to give our attempt to paint the picture of what the running looks like as generally as possible depending on chip strategies etc on the screen if you're watching on youtube um it's got all teams by actually rank up until game at 28 i left out 29 because it was a blank and also it was on friday night due to you know life and time that i had to do it also includes actual league position team sgc or sga i think is the preferable way of putting it these days and the next four fixtures according to the fixture analyzer and fans football hub other fixture tickers are available and um, i chose four because game week 34 is a probable double we think we don't know that yet. <laughs> Hopefully the picture become clearer next week. Um, but don't worry if not watch on YouTube. I will talk through each team as we go into them. And uh, yeah, it's a bit of a look about how the first, well, the, the 75% of the season, 76% in fact, has gone now. Mm-hmm. How that's unfolded, unfolded really in terms of the data, what the story is so far, and use that to project us forward. Uh, maybe we'll go from bottom to top and review what we've seen and think about over the FPL ramifications per data of the team that we're kind of talking about, especially with the fixtures to come. But yeah, as I mentioned, out on the open road, taking it team by team, looking at players of interest and touching on fixtures, but we'll really dig into all of that sort of thing next week. And obviously, we'll try to keep FPL relevance in mind. Sorry if we give a team you support short shrift. So, I mean, let's let's start off at the bottom of the SGC. Uh, XG Speaking table. of short shrift. <laughs> short shrift, and that is Sheffield United. Um, yes, bottom, not by much. Um, they and Burnley in 19th are very, very close, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Um, 25.2 is the team SG for this year. The key man is Cameron Archer, um, who is equal 90th um, in terms of all players uh, for non-pen SGI this year. And 
shockingly, actually, they're not the worst team in terms of XGA or XGC. Um, but uh, Luton are now worse than them. Um, so Sheffield United nice. have climbed a place in terms of defence solidity, uh, but it's not been particularly great for them. And I think a lot of the interest for them really is going to hang going forward on if they have a double. And even then, they may well be a team that you're probably going to be avoiding, right? I mean, this FPL relevance is pretty nil. It's names that come to mind for me are James McAtee, maybe yeah, at best. Builder, uh, like you're not looking at Baldock, are you, or something like that? Maybe you could throw a Gerbich in for, for saves, but I mean, even then, he's going to let in some more goals than the, than the say he's going to make up, right? So, yeah, very, very difficult to, to really kind of say very much about them. And yeah, they're pretty much doomed, aren't they, in terms of uh, the league table itself? Yeah, certainly seems that way. Not too many players of interest. McAtee, you mentioned, would be the one. But even so, I think if we get to the double game week and, and they are one of the only teams doubling, then maybe one or two of them become interesting. If there are any more than two, maybe three, four teams doubling that week, straight away they are down basement of our priorities for that week, even with a double. So I don't think they're going to be particularly interesting at a push budget enablers on the bench for a bench boost or something like McAtee. But yeah, I, d I don't want to focus on them too long because they're just, they're just down. And I don't, I don't think there's any way that we find fantasy interest in them at this point. No, is it probably similar story for, Luton, for 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 Burnley as well, isn't it? Um, similar, so, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Other than Charlie Taylor, of course. Yeah, Charlie Taylor. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about his <laughs> heroics next week. Uh, but not yeah, nineteenth overall for XG rank and not moved anywhere. Point four above uh, dear old Sheffield United and Dooney, <laughs> their mm -hmm. key man. You know, that household a, name, a, a player we all know and love. Um, he, he's equal with Cameron Archer uh, down at the bottom there. Team XGC is is okay. I mean, seventeenth. Um, they mm -hmm. they fallen from sixteenth from the last time we looked at this in game week 20. Um, but again, especially due to the fact that I don't think that there's a chance they double us there. Um, don't believe so, no. So again, a, a bit of a write-off. Um, next team, though, probably is a bit more interesting. So Crystal Palace, uh, third from bottom uh, for Team XG. A fall-off, actually, from game week 20. Uh, so in game week 20, they were 15th. Now they're down to 18th. Uh, Jordan Ayew is still somehow the key man um, for them in terms of Team XG. Uh, player non pen that's dry that must be just due to injuries basically uh, yeah 100 uh, 7.6 he's 49th overall was free 36th last time we looked and i think that there have been kind of just with those injuries uh, and obviously dog days of roy and the early days of glasner um that precipitated a bit of a shift in how they were playing um, just because of what they had on the table effectively and the resources they had to use defensively though pretty good um so equal yeah. sif um, overall in terms of team XGA um, last time they were seventh so they've climbed the place um, maybe again uh, directly linked to the how they were forced to play with the injuries that they had but a few kind of rough results over the last few weeks um, when we've kind of since we've looked at them so losing 5-0 to Arsenal in game week 21 immediately asked last time we look at, looked at them uh, losing 4-1 to Brighton 3-1 to Chelsea and 3-1 to Spurs too and um, all of those things kind of just remind you I guess um when it kind of rolls around again, not going to mention the free hit, but I will mention Bournemouth a couple of weeks back in uh, game week 28 when their defence was being hyped up as the next coming of 1980s Milan. <laughs> if if and when the Palace double does kick in, it's definitely worth, although the defence has been good, just reminding ourselves that there are sort of these caveats that we need to remember about teams of this sort of ilk. Right, Sam? Yeah, absolutely correct. I think with teams of this, of this ilk, like you say, having a good defense on paper is obviously a, a decent thing and it depends what the double is they're the sort of team that will concede two or three goals against the better sides than them and have a decent enough chance of keeping it tight at the back and trying to eke out a clean sheet against the sides in and around them so it completely depends what the double is I believe that one of the two fixtures will be that Newcastle game so um, I would expect them to concede in that so the defense isn't going to be a high priority but they are pretty cheap so if you wanted save points off of a Johnston if you wanted a cheap third fourth defender that week then there are options there and then again even though the xg rank is very very low we know that that is perhaps slightly circumstantial because Elise and Eze have both been out 
at certain key points during the season and they've rarely been on the pitch at the same time. If we get to, I think it's more likely game week 37 now that they would have the double. If we get to that point and they're both fit or if even one of them's fit, that could be an interesting differential option. But for the time being, I wouldn't even be tempted on bringing them in because we don't know, even on a wild card, we don't know if they're going to be fit in six or seven weeks' time. We don't even know they're going to be fit in a week's time, knowing, <sighs> yeah. knowing them. So it's a very last-minute call, probably easier to bring in on a free hit. But in a double game week, it, there's a decent chance one of them gets injured in the first 10 minutes of the first game and then you're screwed anyway. So, yeah, I think there are potentially interesting assets there, but... I think there are going to be higher priorities unless you want to go quite differential and take a chance on fitness. I, th- I think it says it all really that kind of the, the main one that I've been looking at for the last few weeks has been Chris Richards. Yeah. <laughs> 3.9 million defender who seems to have that, that spot kind of fairly nailed. Uh, Glasner playing um, favouring four uh, of, of five at the back with yeah. two wing backs, I believe. Um, I don't think I'd be kind of investing in Tyreek Mitchell despite that going on. But Daniel Munoz, um, interesting. Yes. Um, quite a few really kind yeah. of sexy positions been taken up. Um, so he, especially to couple with the XGC rank being fairly decent, um, could be of interest. It just really Definitely. depends on whether that's kind of the tail end of how Roy was setting them up, influencing that. Well, it would be uh, because a lot of this data is, is obviously during Roy's tenure. Um, but it'd be really fascinating to see. And I, I'm sure we'll have a bit of time at least before we are buying these assets to make a decision on whether we bring them in. But yeah, 3.9 million, great enabler for Richards. Maybe Munoz would be of interest to us as well at some point. Um but you know, players like Mateta, good good enabler potentially at four point nine, like really cheap. And but as you say, the, the interest is always going to be in Eze or in Elise. But fairly sick note seasons, <laughs> and um, that, that that's a big red flag really for me with any player like that. That mm. it's a small if he feels something, a small tweak or something like that, and suddenly you know you're, you're down a player with a couple of weeks to go full double. So you've got to transfer them in, transfer them out again, and look at the fixtures in, in a couple of weeks. Next two, I think we can pair together, Sam. Um, yeah. Or maybe even next three, actually. Um, so Forrest, Luton, and... Uh, yeah, yeah, Forrest and Luton. Let's go for those two, actually, and, and leave off for them for the moment. Okay. Uh, Luton, the 16th overall for XG rank. They were not doing that well for quite a while, uh, but they've climbed up from 18th to 16th. As we've seen, they've been scoring goals like nobody's business. Um, but defensively, as I mentioned earlier on to Sheffield United, they are now conceding goals like no one's business as well, uh, down to 20th there. But yeah, a climb of two places um, up to 16th. An injury uh, to Adebayo has meant that Morris has found his way into the, being their key man now. Um, 8.1 uh, XGI this year. Um, that takes him to 42nd, uh, which is fairly respectable, but not as respectable as Forrest's key man, um, who is a langer. Um, <laughs> I mean, no, again, I'm not going to talk about the free hit. If you own the langer, you know what happened. Um, but yes, 11.4 uh, up until game week 28, 17th overall. And we mentioned that last week, well, his online data was very good. Um, I'm sure it's going to be even better now um, after the week that just had, that just came. And defensively, too, uh, Nuno sets them up quite solidly, Forrest. Now, I think Luton's time as being kind of representative, of having representatives in our team is, is pretty yeah. much over, isn't it, to start with them? I mean, it has been a, a fairly kind of interesting run i mean i think we'll always remember uh, uh alfie doughty um coming out of nowhere to being that guy that loads of us own that none of us could pick out of a lineup <laughs> um but yeah I, I mean it's it's definitely the case that i suppose we'll be bidding farewell to them and almost definitely like i, th- I think forests oh i've had that turn haven't i, I was gonna say there could be that team that i have no no put players from all season but it's yeah, basically turning, like you have no players from them <laughs> yeah turner kind of breaks that doesn't he but yeah two teams i think sam that we can bid farewell to really because i don't think either of them can double yeah so luton i think after this week i think we're not really chatting strategy now but i think we're both quite likely to wildcard 30 or 31 um we've carried luton into the double then the the blank week because they played and i think now that is out of the way, they are very much a team that can probably be pushed to one side. Doughty has had his moments, so has Morris. But considering we're into the back nine game weeks of the season, there are chips to be played and doubles and blanks to still, well, a potential blank anyway, to still navigate. They're not going to be a factor because they're not involved in those. Um, so, yeah, I think we can probably bid farewell. There's been memories, not all of them good. Um, but Luton are probably slightly irrelevant now. Forest, probably very similar as well. I mean, there are 
there are options there at budget budget prices, but I just don't think without doubles they're going to really factor into our thinking from now on either. No. No, they aren't. And uh, the reason I held off on including Fulham there is because I think there is one player who will factor into some thoughts. Um, so they are 15th overall for Team XG, um, a mm-hmm. slight climb up to from 15th, uh, from 16th to 15th. Not really much to kind of write home about. Uh, 12th overall in the league. Um, I think they've actually gone up um, even further. Um, yeah, no, no, they are, they are still 12th, just behind Chelsea um, in the league. Um, uh, beating Spurs and stopping Spurs from um, from scoring uh, this week as well. First, I think it's kind of the second longest scoring streak in Premier League history. It was halted at the cottage. Uh, Woby, the key man, um, 58th overall for non pen SGI. So not really kind of anywhere. And Team SGC wise, again, improving um, up from 16th. The last time I looked at this in gaming, 20 to 13th. And the reason that I've kind of stopped from Fulham for a second, obviously, obviously, is Mr. Muniz, uh, Frankie's son. Um, I mean, he could be an interesting individual just as an enabler on your wild card. Doesn't matter that they didn't have a double. Right, but uh, yes, no, maybe is he a player that you're looking at? Yeah, interested. Um, obviously in sensational form at the moment. I wouldn't expect it to continue at this rate, but as with any budget enabler, you're not expecting it to continue at this rate. You just want someone who's solid, getting the minutes, getting the a goal every other game would be fantastic as a bonus, and someone that if an injury crops up, you can rely on to come off your bench hopefully in a week where they have a decent fixture and cause a bit of a surprise without having to take a hit on the transfer. Um, They don't double by the looks of it, but they do consistently play between now and the end of the season every single week. And having a budget enabler who you can rely on to at least have a game every single week, especially one who is in good form at the moment, could be interesting. So, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't completely rule him out of my thinking. I think as you mentioned, Mateta could be another one in that conversation that might mean that because he's got a double, you want to set up for that. But yeah, not, nothing against Muniz. Um, done very, very well recently. Good minutes, good underlying data in the time that he's been available and been around. So I expect by the time we do a sort of wrap up pod and look at the data on this sheet by the end of the season, he'll be featuring above Iwobi, who probably won't be anywhere to be seen. For sure. The only flag, really, for Muniz is the fixtures in 34 and 37. Um, something that's definitely worth bearing in mind if you're buying him as an enabler who may well end up being bench boosted. So in 34, yeah. Liverpool at home. 37, Man City at home. <laughs> so, you know, you might as well just write off that player as a two-pointer, effectively. And if that means that, you know, the rest of your team can benefit from you having paid a bargain basement price i think it's up to 4.6 now actually and um, but if you effectively a bargain basement price <laughs> price for a player then absolutely fine you know go ahead do it and um, but it may well be the, you know a mackety or something uh, who's got everton and man united in the double it's, you know, we're really kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel there aren't we but you know it's basically four points versus two i don't know if, in fact i haven't even looked but i'm pretty sure mackety hasn't been in the team consistently recently um so it's definitely something to bear in mind, at least with, with Muniz, before we kind of go on to start looking at the rubbish players. Uh, not rubbish, but you know what I mean, the enabling players out there. Um, yeah, I, I think that's pretty much it for Fulham, isn't it? I, I mean, Leno potentially kind of has has done all right recently, and obviously the next game for them um, is obviously quite attractive in terms of Sheffield United. They've been doing well, um, maybe potentially their job will be done quite soon, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. For them, I don't think they're going to be ascending too much further than 12, comfortably not getting re- relegated. And I suspect kind of thoughts will be turning to next season pretty soon. So one of them, which is, you know, they're nice to have, but again, kind of completely out the FPL reckoning. One team in the FPL reckoning though, um, I think, is Wolves. And I think just, just to start with them, it's one of those teams that I heard where they were in the table, Sam, mm. and I, I had to double check and I was shocked to see they were ninth you know, ahead of uh, Newcastle, ahead of Chelsea. Yeah, and they've put in some big performances. They have. And it's one of them where, because as FPL managers, you're so sort of divorced, aren't you, from what's going on in in a lot of the time with the actual sort of league table. You kind of just just lo- just don't realise it. And I looked at it, I was like, wow, that's that's a stonking job that O'Neill has done. Mm. There, There is a double to come, uh, the fixture with Bournemouth uh, to be slotted in somewhere, either in 34 or 37. Uh, Wolves are 14th for XG rank overall this year. Uh, the key man was Cunha, but he's injured now. Um, Neto also injured, and there were suggestions that he may miss the rest of the season. Yeah. Um, so defensively, maybe could be where you're looking at them, but 
no, looking at the data, it's again not great. Uh, the 15th overall for Team XGC, down from 14th last time we looked at this in January. And perhaps a team that may may populate your your, your enabler slots. You know, I know the 8 Nori, for example. That's um, exactly where I'd be looking. Is, is the one that I think stands out. When Huang comes back, maybe he's Arabia and... I don't know who else it would be. Um, if, if Kunya is back fit, I think that there there were kind of encouraging signs about him. Mm. Um, that may, maybe they'll be able to cobble something together. Um, but yeah, on a good run, rest of the season is is a mixed bag to say the least. They've still got Arsenal to play. They've still got Liverpool to play, and they've still got Manchester to play. I think they're playing Liverpool on the final day. They yeah, are, I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. They are because I remember um, talking to someone about kind of captaining Sadio Mane against Wolves on the final day a, a few years back. Um, yeah, I mean, I think another another team that have been, I think, surprising in terms of the league status overall. Um, and obviously, they've had some presence in our FPL teams, mostly confined, of course, to uh, Huang, um, Acuna and Draft for a long time. And Neto, I think, also has kind of flattered to deceive, hasn't he, again? Maybe next year when he moves to Arsenal or something. No, no, no. We'd probably he's probably going to be one of those. Is it always going to evade being in my team? Yeah, I, I, I Nori would be the only one of interest to me because they do have a double at some point. Um, if it's in thirty four, then potentially on a free hit, you wouldn't have to worry about having them for more than one week. Um, if it's in thirty seven, it looks pro- probably less likely that they're going to find a slot because there are just more teams doubling that game week. So they might end up not being relevant to us, but their game week 37 fixture at the moment is Crystal Palace at home. So if Bournemouth slotted in there too, that could be a really nice double of home games. So one to keep an eye on, Um, definitely not a team to completely toss to one side just yet, Um, but let's see where the double lands. Ike Norrie has been taking up some incredibly advanced positions um, in recent weeks. So, yeah, one to keep an eye on, but not a guarantee by any means. Yeah, yeah, certainly. And I think the same applies to West Ham, unfortunately. I think this is, again, similar to other teams. We mentioned the end of the road for them yeah. in our FPL teams. Um, I was very surprised to see that where they were too. Um, not no, If they'd have won today, I think they'd have been one point off United in Sif. Mm-hmm. Like, and, you know, it's still part of the chasing pack of United. They've got a game in hand. Um, I mean, in my mind, the narrative is all about how Moyes is playing terrible football and they all need to leave. I, mem- I remember you saying they need to be careful what they wish for uh, after the Saints experience. Um, yes, 13th overall for XG, uh, down from 12th last time we looked at this. Uh, Bowen at 13.1, uh, down, he's down from 10th to 11th, so not really kind of going anywhere. But mm. defensively, there's a, there's been a big story here and probably to our benefit as well in terms of not owning Ariola for an awfully long tranche of this season, Sam. And last time we looked at this in game week 20, they were 13th for Team XGA or XGC. And now they're 18th to the third, the third worst defence in the league. That's, yeah. a, that's quite something, isn't it? And perhaps something that could be borne in mind when it, in terms of West Ham, just because of their fixtures coming up and you know, who they're going to be facing Um you may be kind of looking and thinking, oh, God, you know, it, they, they're doing all right. Um, but if you do own assets, so for example, Crystal Palace, if you have some of their players, they've got them in uh, 34. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's Luton in 37, so it's going it to be is, a relevant yeah. single game. So if there is that double in 34 and the West Ham do crop up against Crystal Palace, who have a double in that fixture, in that week, if it does happen, like, I wouldn't be too kind of reticent to be... Um, getting an attacker and thinking, oh, West, the West Ham defence is solid. I think some of that's just through uh, kind of the quirk of Ariola, who, I don't, know, I don't know what it is. I think it's like kind of four or five kind of key performances where he's got double-digit hauls and the rest of it's just been quite mediocre, hasn't it? All, all, all together as shown by the numbers. Yeah, and I think when they've had a bad performance, it's been a really bad performance as well. Newcastle have fallen victim to a very similar trend where there's been one or two kind of odd capitulations um the arsenal game obviously stands out in our recent memories and that might be coloring the underlying xgc rank for them a a tad but on the whole i think they're a a middling side defensively maybe those one or two performances obviously they do count it's not that they shouldn't but they should be taken into account that they are outliers more than just the regular occurrence um that being said though no doubles left even though the single game week fixtures in 34 and 37 are good 
Um, I don't think really any of their players are going to stand out as options um, from here on out. Maybe one more week with Bowen away at Newcastle if you're looking at postponing the wild card a week. But honestly, he's probably going to be my transfer out this week regardless. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think they're probably done for us now. Same. Um, the, the only kind of consideration I could possibly see happening is Ariola staying in. Um, as you said, decent yeah. finishes on the singles. Um, the cheapest goalkeeper who's starting out there, I believe, and Johnson's four point. I think it's four point four. Yeah, and Johnson Bradford, came in at four point five at the start of the season. Yeah, and then Newcastle. It's, it depends when their double is, but if it is kind of the, if it is the thirty seven, and I think we'll find out that before game week thirty. I'm pretty sure they're guaranteed a double in thirty seven now. Okay, all right. Yeah. So that means that Dubravka is again off the table because Pope will be back um, around then. Think, I think yeah. he's, he's targeting around that sort of period. I remember I was dimly recollect that I saw how saying about him um, focusing on kind of being around for the end of April. Um, so I can't imagine that much is going to hold up <laughs> in terms of him. Um, and we so, all yeah. know how he's a very trustworthy guy with injury news. So that's good to hear. That's it. Anthony Gordon <laughs> resurrected from the dead to me. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's, it's basically just Tits McGee, isn't it? Apart from that, there's very little in terms of West Ham that we're going to be keeping. And yeah, I'm, I'm almost definitely joining you as per the plan, um, which we'll discuss next week, <laughs> selling Bowen um, for the week ahead. Mm hmm. One team, though, um, that probably will have a bit of a kingmaker role is Everton, um, yep. who are out of the woods somewhat after getting, was it four points back um, from, yes, from, from one points. of the PSR um, uh, infringements? And they've got another one <laughs> um, uh, that, that's currently uh, currently pending. So who knows, maybe back in the mire, um, doing all right uh, up to 16th, um, mainly due to that. Um, bit slightly in different form, I say slightly. Uh, last five games, they've drawn two and lost three. Um, 12th overall uh, for XG rank. Uh, last time we looked at this, they were 10th. I should update to the graphic, um, but I didn't do that. I'm an idiot. Um, Dominic Calvert-Lewin is their key man. <laughs> oh, non pin XGI of 10.9. Actual That's ridiculously X. high. I know. he. They, this year, have just been incredible. It reminds me of... Um, do you remember... I don't know if you were playing back then. Do you remember the year when Ken Dalglish was in charge of Liverpool and Luis Suarez and Andy Carroll joined? Yes. Um, yeah. So like, I remember that like Luis Suarez in particular just couldn't stop hitting the post and couldn't stop like missing golden chances. And mm. the next year was absolutely fine. But Calvert Lewin has it's just incredible to be honest because like you, you think to yourself oh he's, he's just not really been that fit he has he's, he's been fit he's been around much a while since, game now, week, yeah. since game week seven he's been fit but he's only managed three goals and two assists off an xgi of 10.9 I and mean, that is absurd um there's got to be something about reversion to the mean going on there and defensively pretty decent you know yeah um, from sixth to fifth, um, we I think we noticed last they're time. We? Up. Yeah, we noted last time they had a really actually decent defence. And um, well, we've mentioned goalkeepers. Pickford's for me has been the one that I've been looking at. It obviously yeah. depends on where the, where the double lies. Blah blah blah. Double's not great because it's Liverpool at home, but that's fine for a goalkeeper. I'm not too bothered about that. And the games which are actually there. 34 is Nottingham Forest. 37 is Sheffield United. Like yeah, so at least one of them's good in either Absolutely. one. Absolutely, yeah. and Jared Bramway as well at four point two. Like he'll fantastic. be he'll be in my wild card side almost certainly. Oh, absolutely, like I, I, yeah, yeah. And then I don't know, defend like in the midfield. Um, okay, maybe, maybe we're starting to get a bit stretchy. And I think also in terms of buying in Calvert Lewin or Beto, who's been starting over him recently, and um, the player who I, when he joined, I looked at his manager stats and thought, nah. <laughs> nah. um, but a team, I suppose, who can play a bit of a kind of a kingmaker enabler role in our teams uh, when it does come to that wild card, Sam. Mm -hmm. I must admit, I've been completely ambivalent, just completely innocent of how Everton have been doing Everton's very existence in this year because I am an FPL manager above everything else. Uh, but a team that I may have to start following very closely soon. Yeah, I think your um, enjoyment of an FPL weekend is about to hang quite close to whether Dice or not uh, can uh, keep a clean sheet or not that week. So, yeah, well, I think we'll both probably have at least one Everton player starting semi-regularly soon. Um, it could easily be two as well if we both go Pickford. Um, but the defensive data is good um, and they've been quite impressive on the whole. They've got 
got the false position in the league at the moment um, in terms of how well they have been performing versus their actual league position anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, midfield up front, don't think there's going to be an option there at all. Um, but defensively, I can see plenty of cheap enablers, probably a double up um, looking quite likely. And regardless of where the double goes in, 34 or 37, I think there'll be a factor. You can, you can, you can just see there being some very, very... Um, completely i've not watched the, i've not watched anything i'm just looking squarely at the data fred about calvert lewin at some point like right, someone's gonna do it it's gonna happen it will be on fplx and it will it'll be go like, on a five game scoring streak as well you know it's coming yeah, it'll be liked it'll be retweeted everywhere it's gonna happen when everyone's kind of wild carding have you thought about calvert lewin um, and you know I'm, I'm not going to close the door to that i'm just and predicting that that's going to occur i mean it is just incredible in terms of the underlying data versus the actual outcomes with him if he does start starting at that price as well, at like 5.8 or something, he could be, dare I say it, in contention for the third striker slot. And like, Epson's fixtures are actually pretty decent in terms of the running as well. But mm. well, I'm going to need some convincing, but I'm not going to shut the door to him. Um, I, think, I think it was one good season, wasn't it, Calvert-Lewin had, the year under Ancelotti, uh, yeah. when, ha when James Rodriguez was there and things oh, like that. he was flying at the start of the year. Oh, yeah, he was so yeah. good then, wasn't he? I remember that I, owned, I, I did the classic me. And I bought Richarlison um, at the start of the season. I paid a million extra for Richarlison, thinking, oh, everyone's going to Calvert-Lewin. I'm going to be too, I'm going to just be clever. Um, and ended up kind of reluctantly buying Calvert-Lewin towards the end. I remember Richarlison got like three assists in one game or something. Mm. Um, but then Calvert-Lewin obviously scored two of them. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, could I go back there? Absolutely. Would it be one of those players who, you know, maybe needs a bit of uh, rehabilitation in terms of his image? Yeah, possibly. Um, yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. And speaking of rehabilitation of image, um, that's that's kind of not the best segue I've ever done. But anyway, uh, <laughs> we'll Dom, Dom, Dom Solanke. Um, last year, I remember I was speaking to my friend FPL, uh, FPL Jack, um, and I remember we were talking about you know who we're looking to wildcard in at some point in the season. And he said, oh, don't laugh. I'm looking at Dom Solanke. I think last year there was definitely that sort of um, perhaps reticence about mm -hmm. him um he was kind of a six million cheapy striker obviously brentford has um uh, bournemouth sorry had just come up from um from the championship and there was a little bit of kind of um i guess a like memory of him at, at chelsea and at liverpool not really kind of making the the grade had done really well in the championship and enough he came and this year i think he's definitely in the mix isn't he for um not exactly player of the season but maybe kind of in with a shout of uh, being kind of the cheapy of the season at 6.5 with the, I think it's 100, uh, nearly 140 points, I think it is. Uh, Bournemouth doing pretty well, uh, 11th in terms of XG rank. Uh, they were joint 12th last time we looked at this. So yeah, pretty good. Uh, Slanky, the fifth best overall for non-pen XGI. So proper sort of talisman theory hero. Um, yeah. uh, defensively, middle of the table again um 12th uh, down from 11th for last time we looked at this um but yes yeah, still in the mix and still with another double coming uh yeah. the wolves game needs to be slotted in as i mentioned earlier on um not too sure when that's going to happen yet the actual games that are sat there if they are in 34 or 37 are villa away in 34 so maybe not the the best game in the world but defensively um and we'll come on to this in a little bit uh, villa have kind of slightly taken the foot off the gas and brentford in 37 is the other one um but regardless, he'll be in those people's teams um, for those fixtures, especially if they get the 34. I suspect they'll be also included on wild cards. Um, and there's going to be a lot of, I guess, some latent ownership of uh, the uh, of Neto and probably Barney. I refuse to call him as a Barney. I think he's just in my head. He just looks like Barney Stinson. I'm just imagining Barney Stinson playing centre back for Bournemouth. Yes, yes, I know. There's there's a uh, that prop, there's a few things that he did and said that should be cancelled now. Um, but I haven't watched it back since uh, since the days when I didn't know it should have been cancelled. Um, but yeah, um, there's going to be a lot of ownership i guess of these guys and it's the case that if i do get that 34 that it's definitely something that we as people who sold slanky can have to kind of think about especially if we don't wildcard this week right 
yeah, I think Solanke will be a factor um, for the rest of the season, um, whether it's over the next few weeks with the single game weeks that are looking quite nice or just for the double. That is yet to be decided individually in all of our teams, I think. But he is an interesting option. He's having a standout breakout season, arguably quite unlucky not to be in the England squad at this point as well. Um, but yeah, he, he will be a, a nice cheap factor in our sides, maybe as a third striker at some point, possibly even as a second. Um, so yeah, he's taken a, a lot of a lot of the flowers this season and deservedly so. And I don't think we're done with him quite yet. Takes a lot of the flowers. Mm. <laughs> Have you never heard that saying before? Absolutely not. Is, is wow, that, I'm surprised. A man of that, your culture. Is that a what? what, what it's a theatre reference, I think. Is it? Yeah, yeah, you like you it's throw the flowers at the stage. Like, at the oh, end of the... interesting. Is that opera, yeah. like opera or something? Isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. I'm not sure of the exact origin, but um, someone, someone in the chat probably say. Well, I'm very, I'm very surprised. I'm very surprised that that's been used. Interesting. <laughs> but yes, yes. I, I, Everton up next. I think it's two home games in a row, isn't it? I think it's Everton and I'm going to say Palace. Next yeah, week. Everton Palace. Yeah, got oh it. Up. I mean, it's definitely going to be something I'm worried about. And it may well be that if I don't wildcard this week, he does find his way in pretty sharpish, mm -hmm. especially if that's a 34 double uh, on the line. Um, Mr. Tony may, weigh, may well find himself hot on his ass fairly swiftly. Before we get to him, though, uh, Man United. So Man United, a rip-roaring victory tonight. Um, <laughs> just loved it. I'm ads. <laughs> yeah, coming on, yellow cards, Crazy. scoring straight off. I mean, that's uh, Abu Bakar heritage. Uh, brilliant stuff. But uh, what a game that was, even if you know my feelings are Man nice, they're pretty clear. Um, but hey, uh, mid-table overall, um, still in, uh, in terms of uh, non in terms of team XG, that is. Um, Still just about him with a shout of the Champions League spot, if the fifth is the Champions League spot. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of uh, yeah, XG rank, they are 10th, um, down from uh, up from 11th last time we looked at this. Uh, Bruno is the sole non-mover in terms of key men uh, for non pen uh, st Stuck in 12th, uh, 13.1 there for him, uh, which is, you know, as you'd expect, I'm pretty sure I saw a stat the other day that he's um, created the most chances in the league uh, this year. Yeah. Um, although that's kind of just literally without the xa kind of attached to provide the context is this just if he's kind of passed it sideways or whatever uh, but still we, we know that he's a machine in that regard defensively it will come as no surprise that they're not doing particularly great uh, 14th overall down from 12th last time we looked at this and no matter what though still a team that we're going to be bearing in mind um anana was the top scoring goalkeeper um for a little while i think he might still be actually um, no, it's Le it, he and Leno are now, are now um, joint top um, after Leno's heroics um, recently, um, I'm going to say. Um, so there's a Nana potential on the table, uh, Dallow probably the main defender, unless Mr. Shaw um, can sort it out. I'm not sure we'll be looking at like some Maguire, Varane, blah, blah, blah. Um, got your man Garnacho, probably Sam midfield, and Hoyland, of course, up top. Yeah. What's really attractive about United, of course, is the fact that their games be rearranged as Sheffield United at home. Yeah. Uh, the other games, in terms of the, the, the fixtures which are there, are Newcastle at home. Defensively, perhaps probably not one to worry about. But if their game, in terms of double, does go into 37, and I believe the, the result now, tonight. Yeah, means that it has to. That game is Arsenal at home. So yeah, there's obviously the kind of like, oh, it's a big game, blah, blah, blah. There could be a lot riding on it for both Arsenal and for United, which may kind of up the excitement factor and mean that the SGC rank goes out the window, especially in terms of the historic rivalry between the two clubs. Um, but that Sheffield United fixture going in there is a bit of a cherry, isn't it? Um, and one that we should probably be maybe observing even if you are wild carding fairly soon they're fixed a bit of a mixed bag aren't they but still probably worth bearing in mind especially with kind of they've still got to play like burnley i've got written here on my notes and bournemouth as well not that matters as much yeah it's a bit frustrating you know, obviously from a neutral point of view the game tonight was fantastic but in terms of strategy which we won't go into too much today but it would have been quite nice for their double game week to fall into a week more likely for us to play a free hit in um for those of us who still have it left um whereas it looks like their game is going to be in 37 their double is going to be in 37 which like there is now whispers of free hit that week for a few people but I, th I still think 34 is more likely as it stands which means that you'd have to hold Man United for a few weeks um, or likely a few weeks at least um, whereas with the free hit you could just 
chuck them in, get the Sheffield United game and chuck them back out again. So a little bit annoying there. It means a, a strategy needs to be formulated on them a bit, but there are options there. Decent price points as well. Garnacho is still going to be a budget enabler that will factor into some people's teams. And Hoyland, before he was injured, looked in absolutely fantastic form. So he could easily be a factor as well. Um, but I think at this point, probably slightly too early to start diving into them, considering the mixed bag of fixtures to come. By 37, though, I think they'll be on a lot of people's radars. Yeah, Garnacho, absolutely fine on the wild card, right? But chuck him in as, as yeah, you're yeah. kind of, if, you, if you've got a bit more team value, especially if you can have him, or if there's a kind of a cheaper option that you kind of quite like, um, who is doubling, um, chuck him in and have him as your kind of your bench man. That's absolutely yeah, if you're fine. going just, three, four, three, yeah. Yeah, just bear in mind that you'll probably be looking up, uh, he'll probably be looking at you from the bench with points fairly often, which is great. I mean, next year, I think we'll be looking at kind of six million for Garnacho. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. Um, as a starting a starting player for United, depending on where they finish as well, could even get like a, the super boost, <laughs> which we will discuss next year. Um, Brentford are just slightly ahead of them, um, down from eighth last time to ninth. Um, Wissa is their key man at the moment in terms of non pinet GI, but obviously that is all just related to the fact that Ivan Tony only came back um, at the turn of the year. Um, defensively, a bit of a collapse. So last time we looked at this, well, a bit mm -hmm. of a collapse, a, a, a lot of a collapse. So last time we looked at this, um, um, we were extolling Thomas Frank's virtues, just being like, oh, he's doing something amazing with the defence. Um, in January, they were fourth in terms of team SGC or XGA. I'm going to need to decide on one. Let's go, I'm going to call it XGA from now on. Um, <laughs> And now they're tenth, uh, so mid table still, um, but a team that, well, on one hand, um, you know, as this seems to be every year, they're a team that's not doubling, and um, so maybe a team we're going to write off. But on the other hand, they've got a ridiculously good like run in, <laughs> like yeah, they thirty three to thirty seven, even thirty eight Newcastle at home, and plus you know, old club narrative for Tony and. Um, all of those fixtures are brilliant. That's every nice at home. Luton away, Everton away, Fulham at home, Bournemouth away, Newcastle at home. Really good fixtures. But I think it might be a case that we just overlook them just because we've got other stuff to do, effectively, as FPL managers. Yeah, I think so. I don't, I don't really foresee them factoring into my side from this point forwards. They've been unlucky to find themselves in the league position they are. They are over underperforming versus... Um, the data um, and if Tony had been around for a little bit longer maybe that would be a slightly different story but unfortunately no doubles even with good fixtures maybe one or two factor into a few teams but effective ownership is going to be low I think we can probably on the whole move past them and just watch them score a few goals and just not gain us at any points in the back few game weeks. Yeah, no one's going to be touching them, are they? Let's be yeah. fair. Um, speaking of not touching not them... Not after this week. <laughs> oh, definitely not. And speaking of not touching them, uh, Brent, uh, Brighton as well. Mm -hmm. um, yes, they've got a double coming up. Um, eighth overall for XG rank. Uh, Pascal Gross, unsurprisingly, key man. Uh, 18th overall, um, which is pretty decent. Uh, was 25th last time it was in January. Um, and defensively, um, the story is pretty decent. <laughs> Shockingly, uh, they were very, very sort of notorious for conceding every single game. And I think it's still probably true. But the underlying data is really good. <laughs> like, I, I had to double check this. I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm going to live because it is <laughs> mental. I don't, I just don't understand how this has happened um but yeah that they're yeah they're fourth overall um according to last time i looked at this um so yeah i, I don't really understand how this happened um and it's, it's not very good is it um are you really gonna be looking at bryson defense i don't think so somehow um but yeah very very good defensively out of nowhere have a double to come um and could they play a role? They're out of out of Europe. Hopefully, that's going to um, pull the plug on Deserby trying to make trying, uh, trying to make changes with the team. The only yeah, but about this is that <laughs> one the fixtures they've got in those game weeks are pretty bad. Uh, Chelsea at home in thirty four, Newcastle away in thirty seven. Okay, not that bad on paper, but the one that has to be put in is the Man City game, and also you know Deserby is pretty nakedly on the move treating the club as a bit of a stepping stone which i think is probably going to be a bit of a destabilizer potentially and that's my take if you're a brighton fan and you disagree with that fair play so sam est opinion straight back in right yeah 100 he's straight back in on the wild card no uh van heck though 
no, it could be interesting. I'm not going to disregard him. Um, yeah, I think they they will be a factor at some point because that they've got the double and the data is decent in both regards. There will be analytics crowds who definitely go after a Brighton defender. I would be tempted as well, regard regardless of the fact they have not been fantastic in terms of the actual goals conceded. The data is there and Van Heck is at a price where I can just leave them on the bench most weeks as well. So yeah, I, th I think they could be interesting at certain points in the midfield and forward options the problem is always who can we trust but in a single week in a like in one week for a double let's say in probably 35 or 36 i think it's looking like at the moment they potentially might even blank 34 but then double in either 35 or 36 and 37 so they could be a pretty significant factor if that were to happen if you tried to play the fixtures a little bit at which point uh, Gross could be um, an option, as well as whoever the flavour of the month in midfield is at that point. But a ding, yeah, it's got to be a dingra, surely. Yeah, Matoma missing the rest of the year. I mean, Most likely, and Cizo's coming back. There's uh, Antu Fatty, the Wunderkind hanging around, or the ex Wunderkind, I think, at this point. Um, and up front as well, you've got Jao Pedro, um, who's yeah. been injured for a little while. And um, when he's on the pitch, we assume he's a penalty taker. Um, has yeah. decent underlying data, had decent underlying data as well in the championship, as far as I remember for Watford. Um, can also be very, very good if you buy him a foot manager, um, or he was back in the past <laughs> when you bought him a foot manager. Uh, so loads of players who could factor in, especially Joe Pedro at 5.2. Um, you know, could be one that if he is back fit and you're wildcarding slightly later, I think it probably would be too much to buy over the next couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, um, could well kind of play a role. Like, you know, a Dingra could be a really nice sort of enabler in there. If you find out that, you know, Bon and not a uh, Mr. Goodnote or maybe even in Cizo, um, who ended last season pretty strong, if I remember correctly. Um, if either of them kind of get run in the team in the tail end of the season, they could be all right. It's just those fixtures just aren't great, are they, really? Um, so if it was more of a tactical pickup, um, perfect for a free hit. If I do get that double during that during a free hit time, but I don't think that's kind of on the cards, is it? As far as I understand, um, so yeah, maybe not really a team that's going to be folk going to be kind of paying too much. Uh, we're not we're going to pay too much attention to. And um, Spurs next up, um, still in seventh for them. Son, the slight drop off, obviously missed a lot of time due, due to the Asia Cup. Uh, since last time I looked at this, he's a ninth overall for, for non Pinets Shire this season, 14.6. Um, and uh, defensively, they've recovered. So last time I looked at this, they were doing a Newcastle. Um, they were 18th then, um, doing West Ham, I should probably say, now. Um, they were 18th then, now up to 11th. Um, obviously, return, players returning from injury, good for them um, this week. Missing Van de Ven, Dragerson, not really doing uh, well. He played all right actually on the day, um, from watching the game, but it, overall, a bit of an off day, a bad day at the office, I guess, for them. Um, a really stinking running though, Sam. Um, mm -hmm. and one of those kind of things where you're looking at only a player like Som, for example. Um, yes, in game week 30, 30, they've got Luton, uh, 31 West Ham, 32 Nottingham Forest, but enough of that. Okay, Newcastle and 33 again is fine, but 34 Man City at home, 35 Arsenal at home, 36 Liverpool away, and the Chelsea away game also has to come into the equation there. Um, there's excuses to be made potentially to make cuts where Spurs are concerned, I would possibly say. Um, we know what Son can do, we know what Poro can do. Um, it might just be a case of just making sure that you've got enough room at the inn for everybody else. And it might be that you end up substituting a Son for a Charleston or maybe a Poro for a new doggy or something like that. Is that fair to say? Or are we kind of giving up on players that have performed for us well throughout the season and throwing the baby out of the bathwater? Um, I don't think defensively we are. I, I think we are probably reaching the end of them being interesting as assets defensively because they just haven't been keeping enough clean sheets regardless and even though both of the wing backs or full backs i suppose you call them are decent going forwards i think at some point in a in a wild card side over the next few weeks uh they are just going to end up being quite expensive to hold for what they're worth considering the run-in especially poro who's risen quite a lot a doggy less so um obviously he's not 
anywhere near the price point of Poro. But I think considering the fixtures, there's only very few weeks you'd even you'd even consider playing him. Um, the double will help, but honestly, I think there are enough other teams doubling in game week 37 that you can probably look elsewhere, especially as one of those games is likely to be Man City by the looks of it as well. So no clean sheet in that match, you'd think. Uh, Son will be interesting, I think, or at least yeah. having one Spurs midfield attacker is going to be on the radar for a lot of people. Son has been fantastic all season. Richarlison's obviously been a factor as well. I think whoever's playing out of position up front as the centre forward come game week 37, if that's the week they do indeed double, which looks likely, then that, that player will be interesting. And to be honest, Spurs are a side that will aim to score plenty against whoever they're playing. So uh, the yeah. fixtures from an attacking point of view don't really scare me. It's more from the defensive point of view that I probably am going to chuck them to one side now and look elsewhere. And yeah, honestly, absolutely. considering the amount of money it looks like we're going to need in the forward areas, <laughs> I'll probably be just looking at bargain basement defenders to try and give myself that extra little bit of wiggle room up front. And maybe that helps me afford a, a Son Hyun Min as a as a third midfielder or a second midfielder rather than rather than a Richarlison, perhaps. But yeah, I, I think going forward, still an option. Um defensively probably time to go. Absolutely. Um a team though that we will be looking at a lot of assets for is Chelsea. Um, yeah. obviously they won tonight uh well, this afternoon um which is uh Good for them, um, I suppose. Uh, in terms of Team XG, they're sixth. They were second uh, last time we looked at this in January, so a slight fall down. Uh, their key man is uh, still uh, Nicholas Jackson. Um, was fourth in the, in game in uh, in January. Obviously went off to Afcon. Um, now down to seventh. Uh, Cole Palmer um, is fifteenth, uh, slightly down again. He was thirteenth back in January, uh, and Team XGC wise down to eighth. Uh, but a team, obviously, I think, are they the only team with, with the two games to to rearrange, Sam? Yeah, they've got two confirmed doubles. Um, yeah. They can't happen in game week 34 either. So it will be 35 or 36 and 37. Thank you. And obviously, they've got a nice little kind of run over the next few. Mm -hmm. um, they, I think they've got, according to the Hub Fixture Analyzer, uh, the best next four, um, which comprise of three home fixtures, Burnley home, Man United at home, Sheffield United away, and Everton at home. Um, we both got Palmer still. Um, obviously, it's my chagrin. I benched him a couple of weeks ago, never doing that again. Um but a, a team, I think, that are going to weigh heavily on in the minds of most FPL managers and loads of options on the table, um, pending, of course, Reese James. I don't know what, what his whereabouts are, to be honest. Um, Malo Gusto at 4.2, really impressive today, I thought, um, in the FA Cup game. Um, yeah, again. Yeah. He's looked good for a while as well, I, I think. Two. Yeah, great price. Um, helps with my bargain basement theory for defenders. And Absolutely. Even if James came back, is there an argument to say that Gusto's played well enough that he just holds right wing back for a bit and James might slot in at a more conservative right centre back just to make sure that he keeps his fitness a little bit more? Um, obviously, ex exploding runs down that right wing may be part of the issue for him at the moment and just putting him at right centre back might be a, a fairly wise option if he was to become a factor before the end of the season. But Gusto, for the foreseeable, I think looks like a really decent pickup. Um, yes, they don't keep a ton of clean sheets, but he will get attacking returns. And when they do keep the clean sheet, he's quite likely to be a factor um, in bonus points as well. So yeah, I don't think there's much going against him at this point. And Palmer's obviously going to be in every team. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, the only way you're going to get any mileage out of him is if you captain him basically for yeah. a little while. He's going to be like Watkins um, and Saka. Both have been recently, you know, 90 90 plus percent EO every week just yeah. a bit of a hygiene factor um, but I mean cer certainly there are going to be occasions even next week if Burnley at home you might be considering it um, 37 or 36 uh, sorry 36 or 37 if the double goes in there um, well yeah uh, 37 double is almost definitely going there Nottingham Forest away is one of the games there uh, mm -hmm. 36 is West Ham 35 is Aston Villa so the Claret double up and um, 
not too bad, um, really. Um, a game that obviously you'd be very happy to own the, these players for. Um, yeah. I don't know whether they're a captionable or whatever. Um, the, the only kind of headline for me really is Nick, Jack- Nick, Nick Jackson. I mean, could he... Seventh like, of all players. Out, out of nowhere, make an appearance in wildcards. Like, you know, it's kind of Darwin Nunez all over again, isn't it, really, with, with him? Just don't watch. Just, just, just don't watch. But be safe in the knowledge that any week, especially if you imagine, right, if you own Darwin and Jackson, uh, obviously not on Holland, but if you own Darwin and Jackson, um, like you, any week you could get like double digit hauls from both of them alongside Harland. Like it, it could, you could get like 30, 40 points from a striker. You could be in dreamland. Just, I just wouldn't watch either of them basically, but could he be a late entrant into our wildcard thinking? <laughs> Um, on paper, yes, I think, but I, I think I, I'm just not on board with it, if I'm honest. I, I think he's got a little bit of the Darwin about him, like you mentioned. He's going to miss a lot of big chances, be very frustrating. But what that also means for bonus points is he's unlikely to factor in the conversation unless he gets two returns, just from the sheer amount of chances he misses. And they do have another player in their side that is finishing more than then his fair share of chances in Palmer as well. So it's more likely the bonus points go to him at the moment. So, yeah, I mean, theoretically, decent price point, good data. He could be an option, but I think I'm quite likely to go 3-5-2 most weeks. And I don't put him as one of the top two strikers I'd want in any given week, even with a double. So maybe I change my mind. That is certainly not out of the question. Um, But at the moment, I'm not really thinking it. Yeah, no fair play. And you got Nkunku as well. I don't know where he's gone. Mm. <laughs> what happened to him? And the kind of the, the next big hope just disappeared to, into thin air, effectively. Um, but could be one that come back at some point and play a role, effectively. Um, but we need to see. But yeah, I, I'm with you on that. I'm a little bit kind of ambivalent, I suppose, on anything other than probably almost definitely Gusto and then Palmer and then leaving kind of a spot open. Um, depend, assuming we're wild carding fairly soon and seeing what happens after that. Um, exactly. In contrast, Aston Villa um, up to fifth uh, in terms of XG rank, uh, up from sixth last time I looked at this. Uh, Watkins, unsurprisingly, the key man there. Uh, second overall for non pen XGI this year, so a very, very strong season for Ollie Watkins. It was first, came through a very bad gash leg uh, to play today. Day. I'm not going to talk about that. Um, team XGC wise, uh, down from sixth, uh, down from fifth to sixth. Um, but mixed bag of fixtures, no doubles. Sam, I previously said, and we both previously said, come and do violence to us if we are going to be selling Ollie Watkins. But I feel like selling him on our what late wild cards is just kind of real politique. It's going to be done because we've got other fish to fry effectively and it'll be a kind of reluctant goodbye when that does happen because yeah you can be pickhead about these things but the the fact of the matter is the fixtures are a mixed bag of villa towards the end of the season yes there is x motivation but you know, they've still got to play man city arsenal liverpool um obviously had good results against those teams in that mad week um <laughs> really uh, relatively recently um but it kind of feels like at this point we need to just be kind of saying goodbye or contemplating at least saying goodbye uh, to Watkins, who is probably the only kind of FPL relevant asset remaining really for Villa towards the end of the season. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I think it's a, it would have to be reluctant. I don't want to do it um, without without really considering the downside here, because even though they don't have double game weeks, he has been phenomenal um, and has punished us several times before. And we have noticed in the previous few double game weeks that just binning off fantastic assets um, for the sake of double game week is can bite you. But I think in combination with the back nine in mind, there are enough pretty ropey games in there that make you think more often than not, he probably doesn't pay off for us over some of the other strikers we can pick up who do have good fixtures, do have a double game week here or there. So I think it is likely he goes, but I don't want to lock that in as a certainty just yet because it would be a reluctant goodbye. He's been absolutely phenomenal pretty much all season. And just when you think he's about to go off the boil, he goes and hits another double-digit haul quite comfortably. So 
there will be those of you out there who are saying don't bother getting rid of him and i completely hear what you're saying um looking at wildcard templates and different approaches for either this week or next week um it looks likely he's going to go for me but i'd have to do some real thinking i don't think it, i don't think it's as simple as he has to i th- i think he probably does um again we'll come back to it but i think he probably does honestly i think that the fact that there's loads of other assets around that free up at least an extra million um taking him uh to darwin taking him to Solanke, um and that money is going to be needed somewhere else if we're kind of rocking the uh, the Salah, Haaland, and possibly Son um, as the trio, um, plus Saka, of course, um, it's going to start to be, you can't get in any deeper into the basement, effectively, in terms of defence. So, you know, you're not going to be rocking you know, 3.7 million uh, defenders or something like that, or playing a 4.0 every week. I mean, you know, I am pretty, I'm pretty, I wouldn't put it past you after the recent heroics be playing t- Charlie Taylor every week, for example, uh, just as like a testament to his brilliance. But I mean, you're not realistically going to be doing that um, as much as that. As much, you know, I like Chris Richards, for example, as just an enabler. Um, there's no way you can be playing him every week plus another one. And that's kind of what you're staring at if you're going to be going with Watkins because taking that money out of everything else you're going to be doing is just going to be impossible, I think. But one to come back to next week. Um, moving on uh, to Newcastle. Um, down from third to fourth in terms of Team XG rank, uh, Gordon, um, he of resurrection fame, old Lazarus Gordon, um, was 11th. He's now 13th for non penetri this year, um, but he is their key man. And defensively, yes, still not doing very well. <laughs> um, down from 15th to 16th defensively, but... Good fixtures, Sam. Mm-hmm. Very good fixtures. Uh, James on Planet was saying that he's got them top um, for his um, final kind of running uh, fixture ticker. And you can see why if you just kind of tap in, look at the FDR, which obviously is not the most perfect way of looking at it, but it is good enough. Um, 34 Man United, 37 Brighton at home. The game to be reorganised is the Palace game as touched on earlier on and a few served serviceable assets out there avoid the goalkeeper i think um trippier is always going to be there i saw actually um fun stat a uh, trippier has the most uh, errors leading to goal this season of any player um, wow which is interesting and um, maybe it's just because he's always in advanced positions maybe he's putting the ball at risk etc etc um you know he's around um uh, botman burn shy you know all of these sort of players um gordon himself obviously could play a role in the running and uh, Isaac as well. Um, one of those bit of a sick note, uh, individual again. Um, but when he does play, you look at him, watch him play and you think, wow, what a player this guy is. If yeah. only he could stay fit, you know, I, I, I think it's been quite, quite, yeah, quite regularly over the last kind of couple of seasons. I've, I've watched him play and more often than not Wilson has outscored him, <laughs> but I've watched Isaac play and just think, wow, you know, I'd love to have this this guy if he can stay fit as just like a season keeper because he's just he's very very good to the eye, isn't he? Mm. Yeah, I, when he's fit, he's a beautiful player to watch, and obviously the data when he is actually on the pitch is fantastic. And I'd argue if he'd stayed fit all season, he'd be in the conversation up with the Nick Jacksons of the world in the top ten of the XGI per 90 is just that he hasn't been able to. So if we get to the back few game weeks, 35 onwards, and he looks like he's fit and firing, I think he'll be a massive factor in our teams for the rest of the season. Might be another one of those strikers that shift Ollie Watkins even further down the pecking order um, and probably beats out Jackson, um, for example, for a spot in a lot of our teams. So yeah, he... Gordon um, and probably Trippier will all be pretty considerable factors. Yeah, just on that, um, I've got my notes here that Isaac is actually ninth overall per 90 for non mm. SGI. Um, so, yeah, absolutely true. Uh, yeah, your stat sweeps are paying off, Sam. Uh, anticipating <laughs> quiz questions. I was going to ask you that as a quiz question, but there's no <laughs> point. You're, you're in you. You're in you. Um, yeah, um, um, they've got good fixtures, Newcastle, and you know, 
defensively, I'd be a bit kind of questionable about investing in them. But if you've got a Botman or something, oh, why not just chuck him in, see what happens. Hopefully they can sort it out uh, with, with the fixtures to come. Now, Trippier is always going to be in the conversation, but probably a little bit too far of a stretch if we're going to be playing that midfield. Heavily. Yeah, that's the problem. Budget is there. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but I think a team that are going to be in the conversation, um, you know, and it could be kind of maybe post and differentials, perhaps having an Isaac, or uh, maybe we both had a lot of joy out of Gordon over the last year. And I remember you know, at home, he's probably on the high score. I think he is one of the high scoring players, if not the high scoring player. Um, a bit bonus phobic, a bit hall phobic as well. It's always kind of one goal, one and done sort of thing for, for Gordon versus uh, his counterpart in the cheap zone, Cole Palmer. But yeah, still going to play a role. Right, uh, equal second. Um, let, let's start at Man City here. Equal second of the team XG this year. Um, yeah, we, I, mean, I don't, don't need to come talk too much about them because you know already that, ha- that Haaland is the uh, the key man in terms of non pen XGI this year. Uh, last time I looked at this in January, he was second. So he's now first. Um, Salah was first then. He's now down to third. A lot of that is due to AFCON, of course. And defensively, they are still second in terms of team XGA. Really, really attractive running for them on paper. The yeah. problem is, as we've both reflected to each other, that there's a lot of other stuff going on. Most importantly, a small matter of playing Real Madrid in mm. the uh, yes, and then potentially playing Arsenal after that. <laughs> so a, a lot of rotation about to come. A lot of that rotation seems to also hinge around game weeks like Luton at home in game week 33. You you're, you could be fairly confident the big man's going to play, and you can be fairly confident that they're not going to take any game as being a gimme because they're still going to have to win. They're going to have to keep churning out the results. So I think if you're kind of one of these people who is a little bit um, partial to the old conspiracy theory, I, I, I probably kind of can it when it comes to to Harlem. But everything else, the, all bets are off, aren't they, Sam? For for this sort of period, but we know what Pep is. I mean, we're all too long of a tooth to be going into this too much. Um, but they're still going to be playing a huge role, and there's almost definitely. Well, a very good chance I'll, I'll let defence go. I know the data is always good, but I'll let, let that go. I'm not sure it's worth investing in. Uh, but Haaland and almost definitely Foden as well are going to be in my thoughts for uh, just retaining and just leaving for the rest of the season because I think it's too important, aren't they, to the team? Yeah, I mean, in seasons past, I would have been more worried that Foden is going to get rotated in and out a little bit, but he's been so essential to the way they set up now. He's really one of their leadership base um in that team so i would be surprised if he got too many minutes reduced in the back few weeks especially considering how tight the title race is this year if it was just a two horse race i'd probably back them to get rid of one of the their one competitor and probably have a fairly safe last few weeks but with both arsenal and liverpool with the bit between their teeth I think it's unlikely they'll shake them both off too early and therefore they're going to have to keep putting out their strongest possible side for quite a few weeks yet and probably all the way to the very final day of the season. With that in mind, Foden, Haaland probably start most, if not all games. And I think the only thing I would have as an added sort of asterisk there is if they're in a comfortable position in let's say a game against Luton 3-0 up after 45-50 minutes we probably see them come off so you'll probably get reduced minutes then when the game is sewn up but if they're 3-4-0 up it's quite likely that those are two players on the end of it so you you could probably say well I don't really care that's fine um yeah Time will tell, but I think both Haaland and Foden will be big factors yet to come. Obviously, they've got double game week to come. I think it will go into 37 now. I think it has to. Um, So not for a little while, but if you're free hitting in 34, for example, and bench boosting 37, then you'll probably want at least two of them for that. Yeah, I think I think they're, they're just very, very good players and they're going to continue getting good minutes with good underlying data. So what's not to love? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, phlegmatic but perfect. I mean, yeah, I, I, mean, I, I part of the whole kind of shebang of the last few weeks was not losing both Harlan's and Foden, and Foden's retained his value, whereas Harlan's m- magically, thankfully, lost 0.2. Um, and I'm just hoping that that's going to give me enough wiggle room really to leave it to 31. We'll have to have a look later on. Um, 
Obviously, we're all going to want him back. Um, and we've got a bit of a grace period as well of the Arsenal game up next. A tough game, however you're going to look at it. Wouldn't be surprised, of course, if Harlan comes away with a, with, with a brace. It could happen in any game. Slightly off colour, um, of course, this season compared to last, on paper at least. Uh, still got the old 18 goals or whatever, but that's that's half of last season's tally. Um, it's worth mentioning. Um, but yeah, he's going to they, they'll, they'll play a big role um, towards the end of the season, as will, of course, my team Arsenal. Uh, so second overall uh, for Team SG rank, up from fifth last time I looked at this. Uh, Saka uh, also up, who was eighth last time I looked at this, up to sixth. And in terms of SUC, going nowhere. SGA, I was going to say, I said it was going to be SGA all the time. <laughs> I need to decide on one. I haven't, I haven't quite decided. Expected goals consent against, expected goals conceded. I expected goals conceded is just, in my gut, I feel like that sounds better. I um, always go with XGC. Yeah, so. XGC. Let's, let's just go with that. I think, I think SGA may actually mean expected goals allowed as well, which sounds a little bit too sort of like, yeah, go on. Go on, have, have it. Have it. One, go, yeah. go on, mate. Yeah, I'm going to stand aside. Sometimes no, I feel like Edison does that, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And plus your team is, is pretty good at doing that in Premier League, isn't it? Oh, um, we've got a history of it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so Arsenal-wise, um, we come back from not free-hitting to having a couple of Arsenal defenders, both of us. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people come back to triple Arsenal um, away to Man City. I'm not going to talk about <laughs> the free hit again um, but that, that's kind of situation we're in and the question for many maybe you know do i do i sell or do i buy um worth obviously mentioning that the game to be arranged as chelsea at home is not the sexiest game on paper and um, we don't know exactly yet where that game is going to be rearranged to i think it's safe to say sam is that right i think it's quite likely it goes 37 but that there, there's there is a chance arsenal double in 34 but it would take that would take a lot of yes. wiggling of other yeah, fixtures to on. move around there. So uh, honestly, at this point, I'll leave it to the experts. It's impossible to say until we okay. get a confirmed locked in double either way. I think it's slightly more likely it's 37 though at this point. Okay. So that's the, so 34 Wolves away um, and 37 Man United away. Um, the game to be arranged as Chelsea at home, uh, not the best game in the world on paper. Um, 31 Luton at home, obviously a bit of a carrot for people looking to kind of go there. And I suppose differently from City, you do have this sort of notion of consistency with Arsenal and the picks like there's not going to be kind of you know Ruben Diaz being dropped for a kanji because Pep reckons that a kanji is a little bit quicker mm. randomly out of nowhere um you you are kind of looking at a more sort of settled team um we spoke a lot at the start of the season Sam about momentum and how Arsenal are playing sh- playing sort of um suffer ball um Pep style you know in barely getting out of second gear a lot of games um whether it was planned that way and then the Dubai sort of um, hiatus was a way of getting us to kind of move into the next gear or whatever. It, it kind of happened um, and I don't know, it, it kind of feels to me a bit of a full conclu- conclusion that I'll try to probably keep at least double, I think double defence and possibly as well, um, well, almost definitely Saka too and definitely an argument to throw in an Odegaard or maybe even go back to Marston, no. No, Tom, don't. don't. <laughs> um, uh, Havertz as well, um, out, out of position. Um, yeah, three double digit hauls in the last four, four yeah. goals in the last four. Um, another one who is definitely on the agenda for me, out of nowhere. Um, yeah, but definitely on the agenda. Um, despite the fixture not being great, Sam, they are going to be a team that's going to feature heavily in our, in, in our sides and our thinking, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said, because they've got the double game week, um, the defenders are also still cheap enough, especially Gabriel, um, to be a factor even without great fixtures. I wouldn't be expecting too many clean sheets from them between now and the end of the season. There are certain headline games that you would expect them to get a cleanie, but outside of that, there's some pretty di- difficult single game week fixtures there so I think doubling up defensively might be over for me now and probably just going with only Gabriel maybe focusing a little bit more on the attack because whilst some of those fixtures don't look great from a clean sheet perspective Arsenal always look good for several goals as it stands and a lot of those fixtures Brighton, Aston Villa, Wolves, Spurs, Bournemouth 
even Man United and Chelsea all look like games where they can score two plus goals um, and therefore their attack is going to be in in very high demand, I would think. So, yeah, I, I would probably be reserving that third spot for uh, an at- attacking asset rather than doubling up on the defence now. And we are so good, um, really. If you, if you, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's very, very nice to watch. Um, mm. but that's the most, that's, that's awful. That's just, that, that's kind of, you know, horrendous analysis. <laughs> yeah, you know, and just we're, we're back to almost how we were last year in a lot of ways, blowing teams away in the first sort of you know, 20 minutes, effectively. Yeah. Um, whatever was done over the course of um, that trip to Middle East has really reinvigorated everything. And there were question marks across. And we, we, were, we were there as well, weren't we? Asking those questions about what we were doing, how we were doing it. Like Odegaard, for example, there's, there's, he's got to be in the conversation alongside someone like KDB as being the best playmaker in the Premier League now. Mm. Easily. I mean, I was speaking to Adam Pritchard um, on my Slack and you know, he, he made that point. And I was like, yeah, that, that is you know, somehow it's kind of passing loads of people by. But it's so true. Like the, the guy is, yes, FPL wise, perhaps assisting the assister a lot. Um, but in terms of the eye, what he's doing is incredible. And maybe even Declan Rice, Sam, could be playing a role for a lot of people. 5.5 million, right? But mm. he's, he's on a lot of set pieces now. And I think that, that was one of the major innovations of when we were away. Because, I don't know, maybe they kind of documented, yeah, okay, Dex quite good at set pieces. And also, he's likely to be starting every game, as he has this year. So maybe there's a kind of a semblance of consistency about that. Love mm. long shot as well. Um, yeah, he's, I mean, he's a good finisher, genuinely. Um, I, I think another factor is that he's starting to play that eight pivot role that Xhaka played so well last season as well. But with the addition of set pieces, and I, I think he's just fundamentally a better player as well and a better finisher, there is an argument to say he could be a budget option. Um, I think there will be weeks where you curse yourself at, at as to why you went there when other more obvious Arsenal players do haul, but he'll come in clutch in weeks where you don't expect it. And I think for the price, it probably balances out the value quite nicely. So yeah, I wouldn't laugh at anyone having a, having a pick, pick on uh, rice for the last few weeks. And uh, Benny Blanco, Sam, as <laughs> you mentioned last week, is a top scoring defender now. Uh, no yes. like, fi- finally there, finally doing it. Obviously, no international commitments to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Is, is it him and Gabriel um, that are going to be of, of interest to people throughout the course of the season? Because I mean, Raya could well end up being the goalkeeper of choice, perhaps, with the SGC, which is on the table possibly um I, I do want one of the two center backs probably more likely gabriel um than saliba at this point because of the set piece threat as we've already mentioned they are phenomenal from set pieces especially since they came back from their winter break so i do want that covered um gabriel is the more likely one i have enjoyed owning saliba as well because he pops up with the odd one don't know whether i put saliba ahead of white though at this point um although White does get taken off early on occasion. I I think personally for me, though, looking at the fixtures, it's unlikely that I want the double up. And with White and Saliba both considerably more than Gabriel is, Gabriel is going to be the one that I go to first. And if I don't want the double up, then paying that much money for the second Arsenal defender is probably a little bit much. Raya, like you said, good data. Obviously, Arsenal being the best defensive team in the league this season but save points are rare and because of the amount of goals they're scoring even if they keep a clean sheet it's unlikely he gets bonus as well because he's just not having to do anything so it is weirdly going for, for a player that used to get bonus points all the time and yeah, save points yeah. all the time now in an arsenal shirt that is completely flipped and even though he's capable of doing that the setup of the side and the quality of the side means that if he gets a clean sheet, it is six points. And obviously that's fine. Um, but like I said, I don't think they keep as many clean sheets as we're used to them keeping so far this season over the back, over the back few weeks. And mm. I don't know if I want a double up and I would put Gabriel ahead of him for that set piece threat. And Owanana is a, uh... Has uh, made. I, I, I read somewhere that United have let the most 
the most long shots against them or something like that. Mm, um, that's I, a classic I, trait I, you I, want in a keeper, actually, like that's small chances. Point two cheaper. Mm. We started the season with a nine, didn't we, both of us? We did. It would be yeah. great to bookend it with a nine as well. For what mm. it's worth, I think there's definitely been a lot of kind of, like, it's going completely off uh, Arsenal now, but for what it's worth, I think there's been a lot of sort of um, the usual sort of micro commentary on an individual player as they go through the season. And I think it's definitely kind of relented a lot on the Nana. Like at the start, it was like, oh, he's rubbish, blah, blah, blah. Reminded me of De Gea when he first kind of uh, came over. And things Big like time. That. Yeah. But he's, he's been fairly decent. And I, I'm not going to be kind of too upset if he doesn't end up being my goalkeeper again uh, for the run in this year. Uh, but I completely take him back to Arsenal, agree with you on Raya. It feels like a bit of a, a cheaper version of Edison almost uh, from what you were saying that you know, the, the calculus is he either gets six points or he gets two. Yeah. <laughs> There's no in between unless he saves a penalty, um, which admittedly he's probably better at than Edison ever was. So, I mean, it, it, but it could be fine uh, if, you're, if you're kind of judging it directly on the data. I wouldn't say no if you did kind of think, you know what, I'm just going to go over the data um, have Raya and have a, have Gabriel as the two cheapest individuals in the Arsenal backline who are likeliest to be playing every week. Um, I'm not going to be saying no to that, but yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I find myself when I do wildcard, which is almost definitely in 31 now. Um, if I do end up finding myself with just Gabriel, um, as much as I love Benny Blanco, it's it's just one of those things um, where it's just you can yeah. shake hands as friends. Yeah, yeah, that's. <laughs> That, that's the arc that we've that we've gone down. Uh, I'm going to bench. I'm almost definitely going to bench him in thirty if I don't wild card this week. Um, and you know, maybe he'll you know give me a final sort of sting in the tail and be sat there with another couple of assists or something just on my bench. But th- there's no way I'm playing that guy. I think <laughs> we should to say goodbye properly. No, there's it's, it's Nathan, Nathan Ake, my Dutch heritage all over it, Sam. We've got, we've got to play with the Dutchman. Um, <laughs> right, and uh, up top, a team that neither of us have any players from, but we are both looking at obviously introducing one from. It's Liverpool. Um, um, there's this clear daylight, daylight between them and Arsenal Man City. Um, it's to the tune of uh, 6XG, um, mm. which is Significant, yeah, significant at this point in the season. Um, top for SG rank, obviously, third for team SGC, and Salah, as mentioned earlier, um, was the key man, was the top overall, still the key man. Um, now third was first. Mm. No cup stuff to worry about, yeah. Europa League, yeah, you know, it's it's not terrible really for, for Liverpool to, you know, it, it, I feel like the um. Like the worry factor is not as massive um, for if it's the Europa League, even if it is still the, you know, even if it's still something to worry about. They've got the Atlanta, is it Atlanta, I think they've got. Yeah, I think it's Atlanta, yeah. Um, I mean, they are a team, it is a team that we're going to be looking to buy in players for. Um, Salah feels like a dead cert. Um, yeah. And for both of us, we've planned to have Salah in for, for, for the Bryson game that's. Uh, in two weeks time um fairly likely or on the table at least to captain him um for that week and i don't know i I feel like there are so many options on the table really for liverpool um depending on what happens with allison and then maybe i should mention the swift man city if allison and edison if we get some more news that they're both out like imagine kelleher and ortega (laughs) as being because they're Everyone's going to have both of them. <laughs> like, there's no, it's like Tina, really. Like, 3.7 and 3.8 for your goalkeepers, both playing for the top team in the league, regardless of whatever they lose. And they're both decent goalkeepers in and of themselves. Um, Alison uh, Ortega has shown that. Um, Keller has shown that. Really interesting to see. Uh, but for Liverpool, I suppose we are looking at uh, maybe a. Uh, 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 in defence, it's a bit more of a murky picture. I don't know whether Bradley or Robertson is going to be kind of playing. Um, Trent's obviously out for a little while. Uh, Virgil van Dijk, are you going to be going there really at that price? If you're kind of following the Sam method, probably not. In midfield, though, uh, Salah Diaz, probably both on the roster as potential mm. picks. And obviously, old Darwin Nunez. Um, surely, Sam, the top man in terms of xg non-pen xgi per 90 is going to be on the list and 
next two games, I, let's screw the rest of it. Next two games, Bryson at home, Sheffield nice at home. Both of those are games that it could be a cricket score, couldn't it? Neither one of those games feasibly, despite Bryson's defence being quite good. <laughs> that should be something that should be mentioned here. Yeah, especially the way Brighton set up as well, um, because as we took advantage of earlier on in the season, their left wing backs tends to get quite high on the pitch um, in attack and Salah will try to capitalise on that down the right wing as well. So I'd, lo- I'd like Salah's match up in game week 30 against Brighton. And then obviously 31 is absolutely brilliant as well. So I think he's very, very high priority to get back to ASAP. And Darwin is a close second there as well. Obviously, can be chaotic, can be very frustrating. I think you, I think you're duty bound to say that whenever we bring up Darwin Nunez. But he is a phenomenal player. I think he's dispelled a lot of those kind of snide remarks from the start of the season. A bit like Anana, there was a little bit of a running joke about him. He is still a little bit chaotic, but at the end of the day we know what he adds to that side now and he is their best centre forward so he'll play more often than not and yeah I, I believe that he will be a major factor in the back few game weeks and quite probably either this week or next week on a wild card. Uh, chaotic is the c word you call Darwin before you own him and before you watch him miss loads of massive chances. <laughs> you call him another c word uh, yeah, you're absolutely right um, and I think that <laughs> They're going to be definitely hugely in the mix for us. And the next two games is a huge carrot. Um, 34 is Fulham away. I don't think that's going to be when the when the double happens. It might happen. It could, um, yeah. It could. But the James tip-off on Planet FPL suggests that maybe the Everton games in 37, yeah. Thinking. Yeah, so that'll be uh, Villa away and Everton away. Not terrible, not great, mm. but not terrible. Unless if you have a team. triple captain at that point, would you be tempted on Salah? I would be, like, you know, just yeah. just, just because uh, you know, form is temporary, class is permanent. Yeah, um, and you know, I'm think that you know buying Salah in is probably going to be what we'll be doing, <laughs> and then we'll come on to that next week. Uh, but hey, I mean, that's the sweep done, Sam. We've done it in, yeah. Under 90 minutes, which I'm quite pleased about. That's that's pretty good. It's pretty good yeah. going. Any, any, any kind of you know, summary that you'd like to give? I mean, <laughs> obviously not for each player. Obviously not for each team. But no, I think that's what the whole pod's been about, hasn't it? Exactly. Um, has has this season gone as you'd expected? I think there's definitely a few things that have surprised me, just to kind of uh, give you time to think about it. And hmm. um, I've, I've definitely been surprised by the fact that we are players teams like Luton have been in the zeitgeist I yeah. suppose that's just because of the doubles and things but when you look at the data you look at it and think what am I doing owning these players you know and uh, maybe yeah it's been a kind of a, a quirk of everything that Morris for example has gone from seemingly scoring and assisting every game to the last three games and we've actually owned him doing bugger all um, but I, I think it always surprises me how Almost, you could. If someone said to you, "Right, sit down, go through the team XGs for this season, and just kind of make a list from one to twenty, how close I probably would be," because mm. everything here is kind of where I'd expect it to be. I mean, maybe if I was completely devoid of the zeitgeist, I'd have United being a bit higher. Man United, that is obviously. But other than that, there's no real sort of shocks. Whereas before when we were looking at this in January, Chelsea were obviously second for Team XG, despite their sort of league position being lowly, like mid-table. Now they're down to sixth, and I suspect that's kind of where they're likely to kind of lie overall. And maybe, you know, you might be thinking, oh, you know, their Team XG versus their actual sort of outcomes are a little bit sort of um, mismatched. But overall, I, I kind of, I don't know, it surprises me how much my perception, perhaps, from just kind of our tidbits, from us sitting down, speaking about this every week, how much my expectations sort of did match the, the XG ranks, if not, as mentioned earlier, the league positions. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of my, my kind of key outtake, I guess, from looking at this now in March. 
Yeah, agreed. I think that's a really good summary. And it kind of reminds me, I don't know whether you ever had a maths lesson like this, but on probability, if you were flipping a coin once, obviously it can go one of two ways. Over 10 times, you might get seven of heads, three of tails, but over a longer run average, it will come closer and closer to that 50-50 probability and you'll see that reflected in the results. And I think that is kind of what we're seeing with the XG rank at the moment. It's kind of narrowing down to the positions we'd expect of them. There are still outliers there. I think Brentford have been slightly unfortunate. Brighton, again, data-wise for defence, they're still underperforming. Everton as well, obviously, for one or two other external reasons. But come game week 38, I think most of these sides will end up nearer to their XG rank than they are currently at the moment. And I think there's a lot of intel we can gather from that at this point. There's nine weeks to go. Plenty can still change. But if we follow the data that we can see on screen at the moment, I think there's edge pieces that will get us closer to where we want to be based on people just underestimating them, to put it quite simply. So, yeah, there's still plenty of gains to be made um, on some of these potential edge pieces. So, yeah. By Dominic Calvert Lewin's what Sam yep, said. Yeah, 100%. Him and Nick <laughs> yeah. cool. Jackson, get on it now. <laughs> oh my God. Dominic Calvert Lewin, Darwin Nunez, Nick Jackson. If someone the has a one free, trio. Yeah. I, I doff my cap to you. Well, hopefully that was interesting. Hopefully that was a, a, a nice sort of um, diversion from the reality of FPL, which we will come back to next week. But that was really enjoyable, Sam. Thanks so much for that. No, no problem. I really enjoy these pods, um, having a look back at the data and also just sitting back, relaxing and getting you to do it all as well. Whilst I uh, whilst I kind of enjoy it in the background is uh, quite a quite an enjoyable one for me as well. So thank you very much for your help. As always, I'm sure all the listeners out there really appreciate the hard work you put into gaining uh, all of that all of that information in time for the pod in the meantime though thank you all so much for listening um it has just ticked over 90 minutes so it is a full length football match now officially um we have been who got the assist uh on x you can find us at wgta underscore fpl and i am at fpl pricey on there and on instagram and threads it's wgta dot fpl and again i'm just fpl pricey on there if you did enjoy the pod if you could give us a follow on those social channels and give the pod a five star rating on spotify itunes uh, apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening that would be fantastic and of course if you're watching along on youtube please do consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel cool thanks mate um i hope you enjoyed the pod hope you assist you take your mind off uh, blank game week 29 and it starts to get exciting ahead of the run-in back again next sunday just due to my work commitments where we'll be looking sadly ahead Oh, for us, happily. Sorry. <laughs> Before we... Made it 90 minutes, Tom. Oh, God. almost, almost got there. Um, but hey, hope you really enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, speak to you very soon. Have a good week. Oh, it's a goal. Who got the assist? Who got the assist?